What's up, Ninja Nerds? In this video today, we're gonna to be doing a physical exam here on our patient, John. John has cerebral palsy. Now, there's various different types of cerebral palsy. There's spastic cerebral palsy, dyskinetic cerebral palsy, and ataxic cerebral palsy. The most common of these is the spastic cerebral palsy. And there's actually different subtypes within that. There's hemiplegic, diplegic, and quadriplegic. So John has quadriplegic spastic cerebral palsy. And there's a lot of classic or common features that you can see in patients with this condition. Uh, one of those is a significant amount of tone, right? So they have increased tone within the limbs. The second thing is that they can also have weakness in those limbs that have a significant amount of tone. The third thing is that they can also have hyperreflexia, sometimes with an associated clonus, as well as pathological reflexes like abnormal or positive Babinski signs, and as well as abnormal gaits, which we'll also appreciate here in John as well. So what we wanna do is, is to let you guys see what these abnormalities look like in a patient with this condition. So let's start off with this increased tone. We appreciated this more particularly in John's right lower extremity. And so with tone, obviously there's gonna be some resistance. There's a lot of resistance to movement here, particularly on John's right lower extremity. And we can very, very much appreciate that. So for example here, if I'm just kind of taking John's leg and I want you to just relax, let your limb go, let me have it, John, the best that you can here. And I'm just gonna kind of move up here. I'm gonna kind of flex and extend here at that knee joint. And when I do that, especially when I'm pushing in here, I'm experiencing a decent amount of resistance to that movement. So there's a lot of tone there, okay? And that's evident because he has an upper motor neuron lesion. That's what cerebral palsy presents with. Now, we also can appreciate a very specific thing here called spasticity, um, which we can obviously is one of the hallmark signs in patients with cerebral palsy, spastic cerebral palsy. And one of the big things with that is that is particularly that we're gonna see a lot of resistance within these movements, but particularly their velocity dependent. So I'm gonna have to really quickly move that limb when I was flexing and extending to really move through that resistance to see if that muscle kind of gives way and relaxes. So if you can kind of appreciate this, so again, same thing here as I'm kind of moving, flexing, and extending here, that left leg, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly pull, and as I give that yank, I experienced that resistance, but eventually that limb should kind of relax and give way, okay? And so that's something that we can appreciate here on John is again, this significant increased tone as well as spasticity that we appreciated on that left side um, with that velocity dependent aspect there. Okay, now tone, we obviously know we can grade this based upon a modified Ashworth score. Okay, so that's something that we could also do if we wanted to on John. The next thing is weakness. So he has a, a lot more tone here on that right lower extremity. So I'm gonna appreciate a little bit more weakness here that we ex examined here on him previously. And his weakness is more particularly with flexion of that right, particularly at the hip on that right side and also flexion at the knee. So let's go ahead and see that particularly. So John, what I want you to do is I want you to kind of take this leg up here, mm -hmm. hold it there, okay? Mm -hmm. And then again, I don't want you to let me push this down, okay? And so as you can see here, as I pushed, he gave a teensy bit of resistance, but again, it hit the actual, the, the, in this case, the exam table. So it's not a five out of five, he's about a four, but a little bit, very minimal resistance on this side. So you could maybe, if you wanted to, you could say like a four minus on this. All right, so we did appreciate some minimal weakness here with his hip flexion, particularly on that right side. The other area that we noticed a little bit of weakness on for John is that he has a little bit of weakness here on that right knee flexion. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, again, appreciate this. So John, we're gonna have you kind of lift this leg up here. Let's get to about 90 degrees here. And what I want you to do, John, is I want you to, I'm gonna pull out. I want you to really resist me from pulling out, okay? All right? And as you can see there, he kind of gives way, right? So he doesn't have complete five out of five strength. There's some moderate resistance there, uh, probably about a four out of five, maybe like a four minus for him. So those were the areas that we appreciated most significantly the weakness, but he's, for the most part, he's relatively symmetric in strength bilaterally. Um, so we've appreciated particularly the high tone, the spasticity. We also appreciate a little bit of weakness here on that right side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna examine here on John is, is reflexes. So he does have some hyperreflexia on that left side. He does have some associated clonus here on that left ankle as well. So let's go ahead and evaluate this patellar reflex. Let's just relax this leg down here, John, the best that you can. And we're gonna evaluate this patellar reflex here. And you can see a very brisk, very hyperactive reflex. We'll do this one more time, just relax. 
And again, you can see that hyperactive, very, very brisk reflex. Now again, we want to know, is this like a three plus? Is it a four plus reflex? So we need to know if there's any clonus, okay? So clonus, ankle clonus, you just want to really, really kind of dorsiflex that ankle there. Now he has, a, you know, again, a decent amount of tone. So sometimes this can be a little tough to elicit. We might get like a pat or two of clonus, but really relax, John, just let that leg go. And I get like a beat, maybe two beats of clonus there. Do one more time. Maybe like one, maybe two beats of clonus there on that left ankle. So he has like about a four plus re, uh, reflex there on that patellar. Now again, we, he also did have some hyperactive reflexes here on that left that were very, very uh, obvious. So let's come over here to the left side and we can appreciate particularly his tricep reflex as well. So just relax, John, just let this arm there. Relax. And you can see very, very brisk, very hyperactive there. And then again, we also could appreciate that here, if we just relax here, his brachioradialis reflex was also pretty brisk. So he has a pretty brisk rate, hyperactive reflexes there for the brachioradialis on the left side, as well as that triceps reflex. And again, patellar, four plus with an associated ankle clonus. All right, so the next thing that we wanna to try to appreciate here in John is a pathological reflex of Babinski sign. Um, so with this upper motor neuron lesions, usually what happens is that uh, the big toe will dorsiflex and then the other like little toes will kind of fan out. So that would be kind of an abnormal or upgoing Babinski sign in this case. So we got one a little bit earlier here on John. We're gonna to try to get him to relax. We're gonna do like a little Gendrasic maneuver. So pull those arms apart there, clench your teeth there, John. You get a nice withdrawal reflex, but sometimes you get a little bit of that, that big toe, a little bit of dorsiflexion. And a small amount of fanning, but... And then again, we can compare here on the other side. A little bit more pronounced there on that actual, that right side. I did get a little bit more dorsiflexion out of that one. And again, a little bit there again. So a little bit better here on that actual right side. I'd appreciate the Babinski's a little bit more. So we've appreciated the hypertonia, right? The associated spasticity, the weakness here that was a little bit more prominent on the right side. We also have hyperreflexia, particularly four plus with clonus, hyperreflexia of the tricep, brachioradialis, and a positive Babinski is a little bit more evident there on the right side. The next thing that we can also do, which is also something that's common in cerebral palsy, is gait abnormalities, particularly either like a scissoring gait or that diplegic kind of uh, gait that you also, or hemiplegic gait that they may have as well. So we're gonna go ahead and examine John's gait now. All right, engineers, so now what I want us to do is to take a look here at John's gait. So usually in patients who have cerebral palsy, they have some type of abnormal gait, usually like a scissoring gait um, or that diplegic gait that we talked about in our gait examination video. So for John, he has some particular things that we need to point out first, and then we'll kind of really zoom in on specific factors within his gait. First thing that I want you guys to notice is that he's utilizing these things called AFOs, okay? So ankle foot orthotics. It helps basically to keep his feet neutral because he does have some problems with dorsiflexion, not being able to kind of clear his feet whenever he's walking. And so what happens is you guys will notice when we're going through this is that to compensate for that so that he can kind of move his feet to walk, he kind of externally rotates. And you guys will see that whenever we start doing that. The other thing that you guys will uh, need to know here is that he's also utilizing these called lofstrins to help to, usually they're utilized to help to get you through small places and kind of like very short distances as well. So what I want us to do here is, we're gonna take a quick little stroll here, John. I'm gonna be by your side here. And I want you guys to appreciate, particularly when he's walking, that external rotation okay, that you're gonna see, and you might even see a little bit of a scissoring, it'll be more appreciated on the posterior side, but you see a little bit of it. On that right side, he may kind of scissor that inner, uh, that inner leg in, okay? So let's go ahead and try to take a little stroll here, John. So you see the external rotation there, and you see that slight scissoring and that kind of back of the heel there will slide against that left heel. Okay, John, we're gonna go ahead and stop here, turn around a little bit, and we're gonna walk back here. So the next thing that you, and we're gonna walk back this way, the next thing that you guys will be able to appreciate here is that he has a little bit of a toe walk there on that left side, 
and you can really appreciate that scissoring gate there on the right side as that heel slides up against that left. Okay. All right, engineer, so what I wanted to do is now show you another device that John utilizes to be able to ambulate and get around. This is his um, post-tier rolling walker, and he utilizes this primarily in things where there's a lot more open spaces, and he's a little bit quicker with this, so he's gonna be for a little bit more moderate to farther distances. One of the uh, amazing features about this kind of walker here is that it enables for him to basically prevent him from kind of falling backwards or rolling backwards. It has this kind of unique like locking feature that if I push, it won't really go backwards. So that really helps him to prevent any falls, which is very important um, in John's case. So John, what I want us to do here is just take a little stroll here. And again, we're gonna analyze your gait, okay? Uh, speed. Yeah, yeah, normal speed. So yeah, as you guys can see, all the same features that we appreciated before. We can stop there, John, and then we'll turn back around. Same thing, you guys can appreciate it. Skate speed's a little bit uh, quicker, but other than that, all the same features that we had before. All right, engineers, so in this video, we perform our neurological physical exam here on our patient, John. Thank you again, John, for taking the time out. Thank to, you. Yeah, we truly appreciate it. It was awesome. Again, wanted to, again, give a big, big shout out. Please go check out this book. Our, the book is The Boy from uh, Baby House 10. Please go check that out. We'll have a link down in the description box. Truly inspiring story. Uh, definitely want you guys to be aware of all the challenges that John went through. So go check that out. And engineers, we thank you so much for being so awesome, so supportive, and as always, until next time. Thank you.